this time on shift once you can watch dad avoid the camera and we continue to work on the plumbing on this truck so we should spend a thousand more dollars and uh, spend another 45 days on it and it should be wrapped up So last time we were dealing with the plumbing, basically the whole last video was talking about the plumbing as far as trying to get the coolant system, the, the power steering lines, all of that stuff, heater hoses, all that. You guys saw all that last time, but we're still working on it. So we got to looking, we had ordered more parts. We're trying to, we thought we had the solution. Everything was gonna be fine. Everything was gonna work just how it was supposed to. Uh, and then we remembered, oh yeah, the motor has a belt on it too. So if you get in here and look, you can see how cramped we are. So we set the radiator back in and we've got the 90 on the, the auto plumb fitting here. And then the 90 actually, if we get under here and look under the fender, because where we had to clearance that fender, you can actually see, if I turn on the light here, you can see that that fitting is actually sticking out of the under fender here. And so, uh, like Dad said earlier, this would work great if the radiator was mounted under the right front fender, but it doesn't. Uh, in the last video, we talked a little bit about uh, how we're going to route these uh, radiator hoses, and we was pretty much confident we were going to have to move the inlet on the bottom of the radiator, we was going to switch sides with it. And that's exactly what we ended up having to do. I kind of got scolded a little bit for not filming this process, but anyway, all I did was just cut this outlet, excuse me, inlet off this side, made a patch to patch that hole and moved it over here to this side. That puts the the uh, fitting off the thermostat housing on the opposite side so I can I think we can come up with a fitting here and turn a 90 and then uh, a, a 90 on the on the uh, thermostat housing and I think we're going to have just a short piece of hose in here but that will be in front of hopefully the uh, balancer and I think it's going to make a, a pretty neat I think it's going to work real well I think it's going to make a pretty neat uh, uh, situation there. Uh, one other thing I'm going to try to do, and, and we're going to try to set this radiator in here, I'm going to space the radiator forward. I'm going to make an attempt to move the radiator forward in the cradle to give me about another inch of clearance in this area. So these old trucks narrow up in the front and they get a little bit busy trying to do all this in the, in the front end of the truck. So uh, we're going to we're going to try this and, uh, and uh, go to the next step, I guess. So we're going to try to put this, situate this radiator in here and see what the, the uh, radiator hose is going to uh, fit up like. I'm going to, I'm, again, I'm going to try to space this radiator back about an inch and we'll see how, see how that goes. The radiator is actually designed to fit on the back side of the radiator cradle. And because of this thing kind of packing up in the front of this, I managed to get it on the front. I cut some notches and, and some clearances, and I got it in front of the back flange of the radiator cradle. But what I'm going to try to do now is uh, space this an inch further forward. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, we've uh, done quite a bit since we <laughs> done the last little sketch of video. Uh, ended up putting putting the uh, uh, one inch spacers in this radiator. And like I told, like we said before, I moved that I moved the uh, radiator inlet to this side from the the uh, uh, passenger side, and that gave me enough room to run a piece of. Uh, 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 comfortable piece of, of hose from one side to the other by using two nineties and I found the uh, Mr. Gasket 
uh, thermostat housing this morning, which uses an LS thermostat, and it came out at a 30 degree angle. It was back far enough to clear the belt and still gave me enough distance to make a decent, a decent length hose for that. And again, we had to, uh, I, I moved the, the radiator another inch forward. I'm gonna have to come up with a little, we're gonna have to come up with a little bit better system about uh, installing those spacers. It's kind of a, it's kind of a pain to, uh, to install a radiator right now, but I, th I think we can do a few modifications to get that straightened out, but this is as close as we've been able to get it. So uh, we'll just continue on. So if you guys have been following along on Facebook through our story and things like that, um, you see that dad has made some pretty big gains over the past few days on this system. You saw in the past couple clips that he moved that uh, radiator outlet inlet, excuse me, the inlet to the other side of the radiator. Um, and then it's like when that happened, kind of the floodgates opened, things got a lot, uh, there was a clear path on kind of how we could do everything. Um, so if you, if we look down in here, you can see this fitting is going to be there with that 90 degree fitting on it. And then we can, uh, then he bought that swivel thermostat housing and that housing is going to have one of those auto plumb adapters on it also. Um, so just like this. So you can see this guy right here. Like he said, this also takes the LS thermostat housing. So this really saved us a bunch of effort. Well, maybe it didn't save us the effort. We did a lot of effort. And then we found this and it kind of made things a lot more straightforward uh, with the belt clearance and everything like that. So when this is on the engine and this fitting is pointed there, we'll be able to put another 90 degree fitting that puts it out, clears the balancer. And it's basically just gonna be a straight line connection of the hoses between those two fittings so that's the bottom so that's kind of there we're waiting on uh we're waiting on a couple things to get here we need another one of those seals that goes inside of the of the auto plumb we need to get one of those because of the difference in size of the stock thermostat housing versus the swivel one so we had to get a new one of those that's on the way got that ordered this morning and then the other thing that we figured out was the upper radiator hose so when we first started talking about it our plan was to run a 45 in this direction, and then that was gonna have a sweep up here. So we follow that again, sweep, and it was gonna end up going way out here and going straight into this fitting. If you ignore that 45 being on there, it was gonna be a straight fitting on there. Well, none of us really liked that. Uh, honestly, it was, it was just really ugly. It was gonna be a big black hose just run kind of just over the engine. It was not gonna be how we really wanted it. So what we ended up deciding this morning we figured out if we put this straight fitting on, we cleared the mass airflow sensor. So if we put that and then a 45 here, then the hose will basically come straight out and it runs one sweeping curve up here. So it's it clears the oil fill, clears the intake tube, clears the mass airflow sensor, runs right here in this one, <laughs> one little opening we have and then runs up here into this 45 straight in. So that kind of looped over there. Uh, so that's going to be a lot cleaner, make it kind of look like it's supposed to be there and not just be this big hose, really long hose just laying here on top of the engine. So that's good. That's all really good. <laughs> then uh, Dad was also looking at the power steering fittings. Again, we were talking about that last time and that was kind of being a pain. If you look at the, if you look down here into this rack where that orange tag is, so that's where those fittings go. And you can hardly see it here, I don't think, but you can really tell how close it is to this cross member. It's really, really close those fittings are. So two things happened when we got the correct fittings to go in there. First off, the correct fittings together, the hexes uh, on the fittings themselves are actually too close together. So when you put them, when you put them in there, you could not get a wrench on either one of them. Uh, so <laughs> no matter what you try to do, no matter what size wrench you try to put on there, you couldn't clear it enough to actually get any sort of leverage to tighten those fittings. The other thing that happened is the the hose end fitting that that gets crimped onto the to the high pressure hose. When it went up, it actually was sticking into the cross member that was there, and again, wouldn't you could not screw it in because it was stuck into the cross member, and everything again, everything's just tightened back up. Dad thinks he can figure out he can fix all that. I might have to turn the I think he's going to turn the hexes down on on a couple of those fittings to a smaller size hex so we can still use a wrench on it which of course we're going to use a standard size and when we do that um, that'll give us some clearance to put the wrench on it 
Uh, and then I think that's also going to help us with the fittings uh, as far as running into that cross member. So we just have to find, you have to find this perfect combination of all these different parts that are, go that are going on there. So it's all coming together. It's actually some good news finally. Something else that's really cool about running, about building these old trucks and cars uh, is the state usually lets you run a vintage license plate, a license plate on them. Um, one of dad's friends gave him this North Carolina 55 tag probably 20 or 25 years ago, he said. So he's had it here. He's kind of been saving it for, um, he'd been saving it for the past few years, I think, to maybe use on the streetcar, the 55 Bel Air streetcar that we're going to eventually build. Um, but I think he actually ended up with a, a matching pair uh, of tags uh, that someone had gave to him or he found or bought or something. Um, but one of his good friends redo, redoes these tags. So uh, if we take him, we take it back here to the sandblaster and we blast all this off and get it back down to bare metal, he'll go over and refinish this, repaint it, and this thing will look like it just came out of the factory brand new uh, how, how it would be in that same black and yellow combination. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and get that sand blasted and get it over to him because he said that he would work on it for us uh, and get it ready for this truck. So with knowing knowing him and what he does with them, uh, he can do it pretty quick. But we want to go ahead and give it to him just so he can take his time and do what he needs to do with it. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the next things we do is get this tag sand blasted while dad works on figuring out what he's gonna do with those power steering uh, fittings. So we just got done sandblasting this tag. Uh, you guys saw it's um, one thing that dad reminded me of before we got started is if you're going, if any, if you guys have a sandblaster and you plan on doing something like this, like blasting one of these tags uh, to, to get it fixed, make sure you turn your pressure down on your sandblaster because if you don't, you can the pressure from the beads and everything can actually cause the tag this this thin sheet metal to warp. So we turned ours down to like 50 psi just to be enough to take the material off. Uh, but not to warp the metal at all. So uh, you saw when we before we started the tag itself, the paint was all uh, was all messed up. Some of it was scraped off. It was rust. Parts of it were rusty. It had some big pits in it. And then after we got done doing the sandblasting, so we went down to bare metal. Uh, the gray here is the bare metal there. Um, you can see there is still some some slight pitting and things like that. And of course, dad's friend could tell you more about the details on how he does it. Um, but he'll come in and the paint that he uses will fill all this in no problem. Since you can tell, you can't really tell, of course you can't tell in the video, uh, but even this stuff that looks a little pitted like this right at the bottom of the six there, it's, it's actually really smooth. So we should be able to, he should be able to take care of that no problem. We did front and back. And in the shop, because of all the metal and everything in here, we have to run dehumidifiers and everything to keep the humidity way low in this shop. We don't keep it like 30% or lower. And honestly, most of the time, 30% is probably a little high. Uh, all the material and all this stuff that we have here would start rusting. And you can't have that in a metal shop. So we run the dehumidifiers. We keep the humidity low. So as long as we get this tag to him, you know, pretty quick, it's not going to flash rust. It's not going to do anything crazy. And he can take care of anything that we didn't uh, do uh, that he would prefer it to be done like so we'll get this over to him uh, here in the next day or two and let him start on that so yesterday evening we didn't film it but we were starting to work on building this upper radiator hose so we did some running we actually took that plate over to dad's friend he's going to start working on that at some point said he'd have it to us before we left to go on power tour for sure um, but one of the things that we did is we got this first fitting on so this, like I said, this is that dash 20, uh, dash 20 hose and a dash 20 AN fitting. You can see it's pretty beefy, um, but we went ahead and got this one put on, uh, and we already went over and marked the lines on this one, so we know where to cut it. So we're going to take and cut the hose to length. Then we're going to get the other fitting on, and then go ahead and get the other, uh, get it mocked up in place. So we'll see what it looks like on the top hose. Thank you. 
It's kind of, it's closer to the first mark. So probably right there is really close to splitting the difference. Ooh. I am. Shredded it a little. This stuff's humongous and really hard to cut through. So we'll have to do some cleanup on that before we put the fitting on it. All the way up to the tires now. Uh, I didn't put it that far yesterday, but might need to. So this fitting, basically, it's a two-piece deal. That's how these are. This outside collar goes over the hose, and you can actually see the inside of it's threaded to this. So basically, what we'll do is this will now go in there. We need to put some grease on that. We'll have to grease that fitting. That'll go in here, and then that'll start. I will start screwing that down onto it and then we'll put that collar into the vise and hold it in place and then we'll take our really nice wrench that we got from auto plum and we'll start tightening that down uh, and let, and get it to cinch up okay so that'll that fitting locks in everything holds all together and uh, then this section of hose will be complete so we went ahead and put a little grease on the inside of this fitting and on the threads to help lubricate it as it goes together. The other thing that we did, put a piece of masking tape here, so that lets us know if that ho if when this fitting is getting pressed in, if it starts to try and push the hose out, we've got a little bit of identifier to see uh, if that hose is being pushed out because it's not supposed to, so that'll tell us if we're doing it right. What you got? <laughs> Hopefully a completed hose. Finally. A hose, finally I 20 thought. years later. <laughs> yeah. This thing's been a fight since day one. Yes. So finally a little bit of kind of light at the end of the tunnel. This, theoretically, is the upper radiator hose. Finally. Let's go yes. put it on and see what it looks like. So you can see it's now in place here so everything's not locked down full on tight yet but this is where it's going to finish up we'll have to make sure it finishes up this way so we have the auto plumb adapter off the top of the water pump that goes into a straight fitting then we have this loop up here going into the other fitting this 45 up here at the top so it gets a night it looks like it's kind of supposed to be there so it clears I told you yesterday, it clears the mass airflow sensor, it clears the oil fill cap, it clears the intake tube, all of that. So, really, really happy to finally have one piece of this kind of wrapped up, if you will. So, and like we were just talking about, you're basically, once you run 200 degree water through this thing, it's going to kind of take a shape and form itself a little bit too. So, that's going to that's going to help uh, whenever the, on the initial fire up and the engine gets warm and the coolant and water gets warm, everything will kind of, it's going to kind of solidify itself in place. So that's the first one down. Now we just got to wait for the other seals to get here. They're supposed to be here in a couple days and then we can wrap up the bottom hose too. So we initially thought that we were going to have to, we initially thought that we were going to have to wait for that seal to get here. That was avoiding camera. Um, we thought we were going to have to wait for that seal to get here for that adapter, but realized that we've, we would tighten up the adapter enough that it would be no big deal. Uh, we could go ahead and at least get the fittings in place, the hose cut to length and all that, and have that done. So when the seal gets here, it's just the you know couple-minute process to put that in the adapter and get that on the thermostat housing. So we finally, finally, finally have the upper and lower radiator hoses done. So you saw this one a minute ago. That one's all wrapped up. Took the intake tube off to help us here. And then if we look down in here, you can see we've got the swivel thermostat housing. We've got the adapter, a 90, turned slightly down and out. And then over here, 
We also have the adapter coming off the radiator and then the 90 on that. So luckily we were initially thinking, we talked about it a couple times, this hose could just run straight across. That'd be great clearance, everything. But it does, it would clearance everything except for the transmission cooler line adapter or uh, uh, fittings here in the bottom of the radiator. So luckily dad thought of that before we got everything cinched down and got the hose cut. So basically what we did is we gave it just a little bit of a, a arch down kind of like this so that we got plenty of room to run those fittings in uh, for the transmission cooler lines. We also have about three quarters to an inch of clearance on that lower cross member and the hose. And we've got plenty of belt clearance because that thermostat housing is pointed really close to the same direction as the stock one, but it's just slightly further down. Uh, so that was why that swivel one was completely necessary for this. So this has been a lot of effort, a lot of work and a lot of time that we've put into it. Uh, but it's really worth it. Like I said, it just looks so much better. It's going to look, just looks like everything belongs there really, which is just great. Uh, the other thing that we did have to do, and I think we mentioned it, but I didn't really show you guys, is uh, the spacers in this, uh, in the radiator. So the spacer right here. So that spacer is what really helped us get here. It's got that radiator pushed an inch further forward in the truck. And that's what got us that clearance on that 90. If that inch, if, we did, if that was an inch further back, that fitting would have basically run right into the balancer where the, uh, the balancer there on the crank. So that is the other thing that we have that was completely necessary was getting this radiator pulled uh, one inch uh, forward. Uh, these, it's a little bit of a hassle to put in the radiator is right now. There it goes again. <laughs> it's a little bit of a hassle to put the radiator in right now, how it is. Uh, so we're gonna look and see if there's a, uh, see if we can figure out some better way to do that. Um, but man, yeah, just so happy, you know, especially to kind of how we ended the last video, just not really knowing <laughs> what we were gonna do uh, and to made such quick gains just in a few days really. Um, and have these upper and lower radiator hoses. Dad ordered a hex collet so that he could turn down the sides of those fittings for to go into the power steering pump. That is supposed to be here today. So hopefully, hopefully that'll come here shortly and we can, uh, I can show him doing that too uh, so that we can uh, get those fittings in. Once we have the fittings in the rack, then we'll know uh, kind of the length of the hose that we need. We can go back over to Styles and get him to uh, get him to make those fit make the the whole hoses now get those ends crimped on for us so it's exciting it's good so last time i showed you guys that small block that we're building we're going to put in the truck so i didn't want to forget because i almost did uh i did go ahead and get that intake uh it worked out perfect uh the guy his name is duran bagwell uh super nice guy he uh, found us and commented on our last video uh, so he also has a YouTube channel. So if you want to check out what he's doing, uh, from what I, the pretty quick conversation we had, sounds like he's doing some pretty going to be doing some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so if you go look at that last video and look in the comments, that's his page. Um, but anyway, super nice guy. Um, his misfortune a little bit is was my gain. So uh, we got this RPM air gap intake that we're going to put on this engine. First off, just like looks wise completely changes the whole look of this engine. If you go back and look at the intake that we had sitting on this, um, this one just, like I said, just alone looks so much better. Uh, and then performance wise, it's gonna do a lot better. Uh, if you guys watch any of the engine masters or anything like that, this RPM air gap is basically just one of the best intakes, one of the best uh, dual plane intakes just kind of across the board. Um, so it should be just perfect for the RPM range that this engine should be running. Um, like I said, the, with the air gap and everything, that also helps the performance. Uh, that will make a big difference. That's uh, hiding again. Um, it'll make a big difference on this engine uh, as far as that other one. We'll, we'll slap that other one onto the Jimmy, see if we can figure that out. Uh, or of course we can figure it out, but get that one put on that Jimmy at some point. See if we can help it out a little. Uh, like I told you guys last time, it's a little gutless. But this one was basically brand new. He just ended up needing to do a different, uh, use a different, uh, use a single plane instead of the dual plane for his application that he's going to be doing. Um, my guess is he's going to be doing some of that on his channel. So go check him out. Uh, very nice guy. 
So you'll never believe it, but the radiator is back out of the truck again. Uh, so yesterday we had everything mocked up. Dad had uh, got to thinking last night that uh, he the plan is for him, what he's doing right now, to rivet this fan shroud to the radiator itself to keep it one unit as it comes out. But if we ever needed to do some work, like let's say like on that lower radiator hose or something like that, uh, the fan would kind of be in the way. Uh, so he put in some threaded inserts here, some nut inserts that he put in there, um, so he can bolt. We can bolt the fan up to it uh, and still make it removable without having to pull the whole shroud off of the radiator and then you know uh, pull the whole pull the whole shroud out and drill these rivets out to do anything with the fan. So that's going to make. A big difference we had to order some bolts maybe some socket head cap screws to clearance everything on the uh on the fan itself of how it's made uh they didn't have any in stock so we're waiting on those to get here uh they should be here tomorrow or friday i guess and then yeah I mean, that that's gonna be really good since the radiator is out i figured this was a good time to show you guys a better like head-on shot of what this uh lower radiator hose looks like because i noticed yesterday it was a little hard to see um so you can see Thermostat housings up here, and then to the auto plumb adapter into that 90. The hose. This is slightly exaggerated from how it'll actually lay because the the actual fittings up here. But let's see if I can get down here low enough so you can see. If you look at this head on, like that, it does have this U shape to it, but it's got plenty of clearance on the bottom uh, between the cross member and the hose itself, and got plenty of clearance here. At the balancer and then it also clears those two fittings for the uh, transmission cooler which are roughly here and here so that leaves us plenty of room to put those wherever we need to put them and then you know but it clears everything else also and gives us what we need so it's it's just really good it's really really good uh the other thing i want to talk about was this dash 20 hose you know we saw how you know how hard it is to kind of to flex and get how you want it but once even just sitting overnight this hose is almost taking the shape already taking this shape so you think about it when we run some 200 degree water through this it's gonna get more limber and then it's gonna you know it'll hold its shape even better so it makes a big difference uh that dash 20 hose is a lot more flexible than you kind of think it is when you first get it out of the box so i think dad's working I don't know what dad's working on to be honest with you. He's got the lathe turned on doing something. Let's go check it out. What are you doing? Well, what are you working on? Uh, well, I didn't have a 9 6 eighths collet to. Uh, cut the flats down on these uh, fittings for the the uh, rack and pinion. These were so big, put side by side, you couldn't get a wrench between them, so I'm going to try to cut the flats down on both of these. This is 7 eighths. I'm going to try to get them down to both to 3 quarters so I can get a, a socket on these. And uh, I got a hex collet to turn those down with, but I didn't have a 9 16 collet hex collet block but I didn't have a 9 16 collet so I'm going to drill this sleeve out and attempt to sleeve a 5 8 collet down to 9 16 that's the plan so we'll see how it works out so we spent a good part of today trying to get the plumbing for the power steering lines all figured out uh, so we just like everything else everything's been really tight really close together we had to get all the fittings uh we still uh, hadn't got a chuck to we hadn't got a collet so that we could turn down those fittings uh that go into the rack itself but we did go ahead and at least just run them in get them in there finger tight so that we could start getting some some lines mocked up so we can go ahead and get ready and get that high pressure line over to joel and let him get it finished up for us so what we ended up doing basically as you can kind of see back here, those two fittings, and they're, they've got about a, a kind of an X shape to them right now. So that the fitting that's facing the camera is the low pressure side. So we use the high pressure fitting to mock it up. We have some low pressure barb fittings over there um, or on the way. So that'll get replaced by that. 
And then that fitting that's on the left that's kind of facing away from the camera, you can see the hose is attached to it. It's running back toward the motor mount, and then it swoops up and goes into the back of the power steering pump. So basically right here at the bottom of that black mount, under this black mount is right where that fitting is. So that's going to swoop up kind of toward the, of course, you avoid the exhaust, but kind of go back this direction and sweep up here. So that'll have that taken care of. And then all we'll have to do is uh, get that barb fitting back on there on the 45. And then that piece will rotate up here. And we have a hard line in here to kind of bridge that to make sure it clears the pulley. Because this pulley is going to go back on here and it sits kind of back here. So that clears here in a C-shape runs down to that fitting there. So kind of piecing everything together to make it all work how it's supposed to. Um, so I think that's going to kind of wrap us up for this week. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll wait on the kind of in that holding pattern, waiting on parts to get here. As parts come in, we're going to finish wrapping this up. Um, if we're still waiting on parts, we might go ahead and get that fuel line run from the regulator up here to the fuel rail, come and get that ready. Um, that'll pretty much have that wrapped up. Heater hoses are good. Radiator hoses are all are going to be really good. Get the radiator put back in again. So I think that should be the 57th time that we've put it back in. Um, so that should be back in. All that should be kind of wrapped up. We're getting some bolts to bolt the fan up. Uh, so a lot of stuff on the way. And then once all this stuff is kind of done, I need to just tidy up the wiring. I need to get those power cables on that positive post, get the uh, the ground run into the inside of the truck so we can get the, uh, the gauges, you know, officially grounded. So just wrap up a few things like that. And I think we should be ready for the first fire on it. So let's see. We still have to take the center fender out at some point and patch that hole that we cut in it. So still a lot of tedious things to happen, but should be good. So if you guys don't mind, like this video, comment what you think about these radiator hoses. I think they look really great. And I think they look like they just kind of belong here. Uh, and make sure to subscribe. That's always it's always really helpful. It lets us know that people are watching and interested in what we're doing. So, uh, and also earlier this week we dropped the video showing some of the old drag racing from 1993. A lot of a lot of dad stuff. A lot of his friends. A lot of uh, passes from down at Greer and Farmington and Wilkes and Wilkesboro Dragway. So make sure you go check that out. It's pretty cool uh, to see kind of how things used to be, uh, and you can see uh, how that 55 car right there how it used to run and then hopefully later this year we'll be able to do a comparison between the two so uh thanks for watching shift points